Greetings and welcome to Blender 102, week number two, where we are going to actually start the modeling process of our character. I want to get a couple of things out of the way real quick. First off, you need to download the files that are listed here in the middle of your screen. Uh, make sure that you get those. If the position or um, the location of those files in the ether uh, happens to change ever at some point, I will do my best to update at least the video description uh, so that you can see where they're being stored. But for now, this Dropbox location should be a good place to snag those. Next, I want to talk about how these classes are essentially going to be working from here on out because it is a little bit different, um, particularly from uh, what we were doing previously. Let me see here. Let's go over to my whiteboard so I can at least write something and get my brush out. So here's the way class is going to work. Essentially, what I'm doing is I am modeling on the fly. I do not have a step-by-step -step series of instructions as to where I'm going to place every single vertex on a character when I model. As a matter of fact, along the way, I will probably take some vertices and put them in places that I normally wouldn't and have to go back and fix them later. For me, modeling is an artistic and iterative process that I'm constantly interpreting and reinterpreting the entire time that I'm working. So there is no one way to do anything. If that's frustrating to you, then I really apologize, and your best bet is probably going to be to follow along as best you can during the class, and then watch the videos a couple of times, and think, focus more on why I'm doing what I'm doing, as opposed to exactly what it is I'm doing along every step of the way. In the end, what you're looking for is the proper shape, and you're not really stressed so much about exactly what tool to click and when, and where to put each and every vertex. That is going to come with time, practice, and a whole lot of patience. On that note, uh, there may be certain times where I do not get as far as I want to on a model during our allotted class time, and if that happens, I will do uh, one of the following. I will either model it in between classes and then go over what I did after class, or I will record that and put it up for uh, view later, or I'll have an open office hour session if I have some free time, and I'll just model it and everybody can join in if they want to. One way or another, you will get to see the result and how I got to where I got to. All of that said, this is just the first class after the introductory 101 class. I'm not expecting any of you to blow me away in terms of your modeling quality. The quality of your models is really only going to improve, in my opinion, only after you have modeled a couple of characters and then gone all the way through the rigging and animation process. And the reason I say that is that there are certain decisions that you will make along the modeling path as to how much detail to put in this area, where to put a vertex, how to get things lined up uh, in a particularly nice way that I don't think you're going to be able to fully grasp or understand until you've gone through it a couple of times, until you've seen what happens when you try to animate a character with bad geometry. So, all that out of the way, once again, make sure you have these files. And once you do, it's time for us to go ahead and jump into Blender. Now, I am going to be doing the occasional ready check throughout the evening. So if you're going to be clicking along with me and trying to model alongside, I would like you to go ahead over inside of BuzzNet and set your status over to participate now. If you're just going to be watching and having fun kind of on your own time, then you don't need to set up for participate. And in fact, I'd prefer that you didn't because I use participate to see who I need to kind of wait for, who I need to catch up or who's having problems. And if you're not actually participating, then don't click the button. It just keeps me uh, clearer on my my end. Now with that said, with, for the people who are participating right now, I'm going to do a quick ready check, and I want you to click ready only if... Re Risen Force? I didn't say why. Thank you. I only want you to click ready if, and don't try me, I can watch every single click, uh, if you have those two files downloaded to some point on your computer that you can find them. So if you have those two files, that front view and that side view, then go ahead and click ready for me. And that only leaves Brett's 19, or Brett ES, Brett S, I don't know, uh, who is still set to not ready. Brett, if you are hearing the sound of my voice, you are either not ready or you are away from your keyboard. Here's how I want these ready checks to work from now on until the end of the days that we are having these classes. Whenever I ask for a ready check, if you're still working, just reach up and click on the one minute button. As a matter of fact, everybody click one minute right now. Just do it. Fantacular. Uh, everybody but J-Mac just succeeded. J-Mac actually took an extra second there. He needed a moment to clear his thoughts, focus on the idea of, of clicking one minute. And then I think once he reached his Zen mode, he was, you know, 
he was good. So this is what I want you to do. When I ask for a ready check, if you're still working, immediately just reach up and click one minute. I know. I realize you may need more than one minute. You may need two. You may need five. I don't know. But that tells me that, hey, I acknowledge the ready check. I realize that you want to know where I am, and I'm just trying to let you know that I'm still working. Then when you're actually done, as soon as you finish whatever the task was, go ahead and click ready. I may not be able to wait for everybody, okay? But as soon as the majority has clicked ready and I see some greens down the board, then I'm going to go ahead and move, uh, move on. Thank you, Streeter. Uh, but your status really should be set to one minute right now. But you know what? I'm just going to reset everybody to not ready. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do, actually, the first thing I need to do is verify a few things in my user preferences. Now, um, I have my screencast keys on. Let me go ahead and turn those on before I get much further into the lecture. So there you go. You should now be able to see my keys when I push stuff. Also, a few things that I think are particularly important, but these are just me. If you don't want to work the same way, you don't have to. As before, I usually select with left mouse instead of right. To me, selecting with right mouse is a little ass backwards. I just never have been able to get into it. Also, I use uh, continuous grab. The only other one that I like to use when I'm working, particularly on modeling, is for uh, under editing, I'll turn on release confirms for transforms. And that just means I can just grab vertices and drag them around. And it, to me, it feels very quick and organic and intuitive and very smooth. If you don't like it, you don't have to use it. It's just that's how I'm going to be working, just so that everybody's kind of on the same page and wondering why I'm able to move my vertices so quickly and easily. This is why. All right, so I can go ahead and click Save as Default in this, at this point, and we can begin the modeling process. We need to get our image planes in place. I'm going to tap the N key. And you have the background images area it's located way down here at the bottom. Uh, go ahead and check background images and then click add image and immediately click the open button. Now you may have to look around on your end as to where you put those, but I have a folder specifically for mine. So wherever you put them, it doesn't matter which order you grab them, go ahead and grab the front one. Then you're going to click add image again and do the same thing to open up the side one. So you should have front and side. Now setting these up is a relatively easy process. All you're going to do is start out, let's start at the front one. Make sure your axis is set to front. That's it. Now, when you switch to a front view, you won't see it unless you are in orthographic mode. So let me go ahead and take my axis over here. I'm going to set this to right. Now, I'm just going to confirm a couple of things here. I just like showing this off. This system is a little backwards to what I prefer. Now, I'm not complaining. I'm just stating. I generally like it when I'm looking at the front of a character uh, for the y-axis or the forward axis to be pointing right back at my face. The way Blender does this is the y-axis is actually pointing away from us. Now, I know that I could switch my axis around from front to back. However, I am lazy, and I don't want to constantly be pressing Control-1 on the numpad. I want to just be able to tap 1 and go right to the front view. So in that regard, I need to make sure that I use front for the front image and right for the side image. And you'll be able to see both of these. I don't want to change the hotkeys. Every time I change hotkeys, I end up getting myself in trouble, meaning some student is trying to follow along, things are different on their end, and we have explosions. Now, I did get a question. Somebody asked where you can get these images. Now, you, uh, Gab, would you paste that one more time over inside of BuzzNet so we can get a little yeah, copy-paste sure. action? Here's where they are, but don't worry about trying to read that off the screen because Gavin's about to paste them over in BuzzNet so that you can grab them. Uh, or he's trying to. Gav is having a little bit of, um, well... Cut and paste for this because BuzzNet isn't designed properly. Oh, is it not? Okay, well, there you go. There's the side in the front. You just copy-paste those into your local browser, and you should be able to grab those right away. Just save them someplace where you can get to them, and then load them up as background images. Okay, now it's time for us to begin modeling, and like many of my modeling projects, I'm going to start this out with a box. We're going to be doing some box modeling for our character. 
Now I'm going to give you guys a warning, sort of a generic heads up for all modeling projects. Modeling requires one thing above all. Even more than it requires skill, it requires this one thing. Gav, do you want to take a stab at what that one thing is? It's okay to be wrong. Patience. Patience. He's all over it. Yeah, I don't even care if you plan it. You just need patience. Now planning is good. And in this case, we already have plan. You can tell we've planned because we have image planes. If we hadn't planned, we wouldn't have anything, and you should have something before you begin. But if you are not patient, you will pull your hair out, you will go crazy, and you will probably walk away in a huff. Your model will probably look terrible while you are building it. Do not expect your surface to look great during the modeling process. In fact, it may not even look great until toward the very end. It's just one of those things that I think everybody needs to be exposed to once or twice. All right, so... Let's go ahead and begin. I am going to hit control up arrow for now and then hit T and N so I'm just focused primarily on just one great big viewport. I will be uh, kind of changing that around as we work but let's hit control R first and I want to split this cube in half. Now notice the axis upon which I'm splitting it. You see the Y axis? So I'm kind of using the Y axis like a big laser and cutting right down that like so. Then I'm going to tap the Z key so I look through my surface. Let's hit Control tab F and then tap the B key and drag out all of the uh, all the faces on the left side of the box. Now again, make note of the axis. Basically, these are all the faces on the negative side of the X axis. Once you have those, tap the X key and nuke them out. If you need to confirm what that looks like, if you look over in the front view over your image planes, Basically, that leaves all the geometry on the character's left side, which I'm probably going to start referring to as the right side, kind of like stage right. Just so my head doesn't get too terribly confused. But this is something like what you should have. Now, I'm also going to delete out the face on the top and the face on the bottom. So what I want to do real quick, just to kind of get everything started off properly, is I want to do a quick ready check to see who's made it to this point. So I'll pause the video now. So we have resumed. Everybody is ready with their new piece of geometry. All right, so I'm going to start off here in perspective for just a second. And I want to make a couple of basic changes to this shape. I'm going to hit Control-Tab-E and grab edges. I'm going to slide this edge back and this edge forward just a little. Now, notice that I'm leaving this edge. I'm not bringing them in equally to make you know, like a, a trapezoid shape. I'm actually bringing the back edge up only a little bit because generally speaking, I think we're a little more rounded at the front than we are at the back. But you don't have to stress the details of that too terribly much. Our next thing is to go over to the side view and we're just going to start positioning the vertices. So control tab V and welcome to the world of modeling. We're just going to be doing a lot of vertex moving tonight. This is kind of how this works. Now earlier you saw in my user preferences that I turned on uh, release confirms for transformations. Because of that I'm going to hit control space and hide away my move tool. And now I'm just going to start dragging some vertices and what I want to do is give a shape that's kind of like a belt that goes right around the center of the character's waist. And the way I'm going to do this is kind of interesting because I'm not just going to go in straight lines. A lot of people who are just getting into modeling for the first time will do something kind of like this, where they have these perfectly straight lines that go straight across the model. That's all well and good, and you can make that work for you. It's not that big of a deal, but... I find that you will get much cleaner deformation and a much nicer looking model if you think about how clothes will generally drape around a surface, or if you're going to try to draw a line across a surface, like if you grabbed uh, somebody's torso and grabbed a magic marker and tried to draw a loop around their waist, it would probably, whether you knew it or not, um, arch upward just a little bit, because you have that kind of flow from your hip bone uh, that's going to make it all the way up to your rib cage. So I'm going to make this shape kind of pinch in just a little bit in the middle. In fact, I'm going to make it a little bit narrower in the back than it is in the front. So think about it like that. As soon as we're done, I'm going to jump around to the front, and obviously we have some problems here. So I'll grab this edge. This is the forward edge. If you need to confirm that, you can rotate slightly and then flip right back. Like so. And I'll just tap G and then middle mouse drag that pretty much right into the side. And grab the next one and middle mouse drag that over as well. And then I'll make a couple of little changes here. 
And you see how it kind of flares out to sort of follow the shape a little bit. Now, with that done, we are ready to drop on just that. I mean, just this one little bit of detail. No, there's no detail. It's just this one little shape. We're ready to go ahead and add on a couple of modifiers. And here's how we're going to do that. Let's hit Control up to bring up uh, my, my tool area again. And I'll open up my modifier stack. And we'll start off by adding a mirror modifier. Now, if you set up your geometry the same way I have, your mirror should immediately work. The only thing I would recommend is that you turn on clipping before you forget, because you probably will if you don't do it right now. Next, go back to Add Modifier and drop down a subdivision surface. Now here's the deal about subdivision surface. I'll be turning it on and I'll be turning it off a lot while we work. But at the same time, I don't want you to get too carried away with making your smooth mesh line up with your drawing. Right now, as you can see, we're basically working with the cage of our subdivision surface, these outermost vertices. And I have found that if you start off really early with low resolution geometry and try to make your your smooth mesh line up with your drawing you will spend a pretty good chunk of your modeling time kind of going back and forth and slowly shrinking your model to make everything line up properly so what I want you to do for now while we have so little detail is just put your cage right on the outside of the drawing as we add more and more detail while we work the smooth mesh will start pulling closer and closer to the result. So it'll start pulling out toward the drawing. So we don't have to stress about it right now. It's just way too soon for that. Okay, so at this point, you should have some sort of a little belt-like apparatus that goes right around the waist of your character, and it should look very, very simple. And yeah, we could probably go ahead and save our work at this point, so I'm just going to hit Control-S, and let's see, I've got a couple of different files in here. Let me go ahead and just name this one. We'll call this... Thursday class underscore model. So I can remember that. Click save. And there we go. And everybody should save too. Now, I want to do a quick ready check for people to get to this point. All right. So we are now ready to move on. Now, here's the deal. From this point, we could move either up or down. And it doesn't really matter. Uh, we've still got the same amount of work to do however we do this. So, Gab, did you have something? Well, I was going to say go up, because you went down first on uh, the last class. All right, well, then I'll go up first. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select this edge here along the very top. I did that just by alt-clicking on that edge. You'll notice I'm still in vertex mode, but this still works, and I do kind of love that. And I'm just going to tap E and pull this up to right underneath the line of the bosom, like so. And you can see how that lines up in the front view. And you can see how it lines up in the side view as well. And I think rather than focus too much on using a whole lot of control up arrow, I may just collapse out my time slider because I'm not going to use it anyway. I, mean, I didn't know about control up arrow. I always use shift space for the, um, it seems to do the same as it does in Unity for whichever window you're hovered on. Oh, yeah, yeah, it will. Okay, so now let's start pulling some vertices. Now, again, I'm just kind of following some very general body curvature. So you see how we're kind of sweeping upward a little bit, uh, kind of simulating the shape of the rib cage, keeping the geometry very, very simple for the time being. And it's smooth curves you're after. There's no straight lines on a human body. No, there really aren't. In fact, if you're ever adding detail and you find yourself with straight lines, you've probably just forgotten to move some vertices around. Okay, now I'm going to do things a little bit differently than I did in either class. So we're going to do one up and then one down. So here's the lower edge, same thing. I'm just going to tap E and pull this down. And then just start positioning the four vertices I got here across the surface. And you can kind of see that the shape that I'm making here looks a lot like a corset or like a bustier. And this is where those of you who are either female or have access to one who wears such things, uh, you may have a little bit of a distinct advantage. Did you see that steampunk corset that, was on, that he posted on Facebook? No, but I kind of want to. It's quite cool. Yeah. Steampunk, I think, is cool. All right, so very, very basic shape. so far. 
and you can see what it looks like when we shade up. Also, uh, and this may just be a, a little bit easier for folks to kind of follow along with, it's not a bad idea uh, to get out of edit mode for just a moment and just click on smooth so you can get a clearer idea of what your surface is looking like and generally, and my computer supports it really well, I'll take my subdivision surface uh, modifier and kick the view up to two. Just have a few more polygons. All right, we'll go back over to the front view and go back into edit mode and hit Z so we can see through the surface. Now the funny thing about kicking up that level of density, you'll probably find yourself turning this modifier on and off a lot more often. Don't stress about that, that's perfectly okay. That brings up the thing that I've forgotten, which I was going to ask, is there a way to, I know there is in Maya, I think there is in Max, to see the subdivisions on the half you're not modeling on, but not on the half that you are. Not that, aware, not that I'm aware. Not that I'm aware. Because if we turn okay. this guy off, we're, I think we're just going to see... Yeah, because they're dependent on one another. I never use that anyway. I know some people really love that. I'm just not one of them anyhow. Okay, so now I'm going to grab this edge. I think I, had, I do just feel like working down first. Cause I think it's generally easier and allows us to get a clearer idea of the shape early on. So I'm going to grab this lower edge... I'm just starting here in the front view again. We'll just hit extrude one more time. And really all I'm doing, my eyes are on that outermost edge there to kind of follow the form. And then we can kick over to the side view. And once again, we can start placing vertices. And you see how I'm just kind of following a line that goes right over the edge of the hip. Now, I want to go ahead and do a quick ready check for people to kind of catch up to this point. So let me go ahead and do that now. All right, the next portion, the next thing I'd like to do is go ahead and wrap this around the underside uh, of the groin area. And we just don't have enough detail to do this properly. So we're finally to a point where we need to add in some detail. But the way I want to do this is just kind of as a reminder, anytime you add detail, your next step should be to position that detail. You're never going to just add in an edge and then walk away and do something else. As soon as you add it, move it. So I'm going to hit Control R and right here down the front of the body, I'm going to add one brand new edge. Immediately pop into the side view and just start sort of placing that, uh, in this case by sliding it forward. Now some of this, because we only have this two-dimensional image plane, we have to sort of perceive of the curvature. You have to kind of see it in your head and be able to try to, you know, to feel it mentally. That may not come easily for everybody, and I acknowledge that, but it's one of those things that you will have to develop as you model. We also need to do the same thing to the back, so I'm going to hit Control R, and this one I'm going to bring a little bit closer to the center of the spine, about like so. Yes, Gav? You know you're, I was just going to say, you know you're an ortho. Yeah, I know. That's all right. I just, yeah. you know, it can throw you up. Yeah. Where it goes is not that critical at the moment, but, you know. Okay, now we're going to connect these two pieces, and here's how we're going to do it. So let's jump over to the front view. Uh, take it easy, Chris. Oh, bye, Chris. I'm going to grab this edge here at the front, so Control-Tab-E, and just start off with a single extrusion that runs down here to the base of the groin. And as soon as I do that, I'm going to switch over to vertices and clean the shape up a little. Go over here to the side view and just kind of do the same thing. Slide it back a little bit. Again, you're kind of working off some of the lines of the drawing, and a little bit is just kind of uh, intuited. It's just about picking up the underdrawing. Just yeah, just about. On the yeah yeah. No, I mean the cap the capture is. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, you should be able to see the underdrawing on your end pretty well. And I never did move these vertices, so even though I said that you should, I never did. So let me go ahead and move these before I do too much else. I'm just going to kind of slide them back and get a little bit of that rounding in place. Then I'll switch over to edges, and I'm going to do the same thing here. We're just going to extrude one good time, 
pretty much straight down so it's straight across from this piece. Then let's click out here and we need to connect these. So to do that here in Blender we can just grab the two edges and tap F. Switch to vertices and I'm just going to thin this area back a little bit. Okay, now let's do a quick ready check for people to get to this point. It looks like most everybody has that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is start kind of working our way down to the hip, and I'm trying to keep the geometry as, uh, as simple as I can while we work and add my detail in very, very steadily. In fact, maybe a little more steadily than I did on Tuesday. Uh -huh. So, here's what I want to do next. We are going to split the front of the groin and of course the back where we're starting to form uh, her bottom. So I'm going to pull this vertex down so we're not pinching so much. Let's hit Control R and put one split here and then Control R and put a split here. And then this is the easy part. I'm just going to grab these edges, so Control Tab E and hit A. And let's grab this edge and this edge and this edge. There's only three of them. Come over to the front view and I'm just going to extrude out a little bit, like so. And you can see what that did. Now back over in the front view, I need to kind of reshape the uh, kind of the bikini line area to make sure it's sort of conforming with the drawing. And then I can bring this in as well, and these two vertices can actually be merged at this point. So I'll just merge them at last. That lines up pretty well. Back here we can do the same thing. Now we don't have a clear image of the back of the character, so we'll just grab these two, Alt-M, merge at last, and then let's just take a look at the side view and see what information we can pull out of it. We know this needs to go back, and then to get the rest, just imagine a line tracing down her back and across the back of her hip, and you can see we should be probably somewhere about like so. I'd also like to clean up what's going on at the base of the groin, uh, so I'm going to hit Control R and split this just once. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of trade-off here. We're going to take the front and pull it up a little bit, like so. We'll take the back and pull that up a little bit, like so. And we'll take the center area and just pull that down a little. You start to form kind of like a, a leotard shape. Probably be a pretty good time to turn on our smooth and see what this is starting to look like. How many sections longitudinally do you have? Well, why don't you just... Um, have a quick count up. We have one, two, three, four edges that don't include the seams right now. We'll need more than that, but that's what we have at the moment. I make it five as well, actually. One, I think. two, three. Well, I said four that aren't the seams. Oh, or unless you're counting I the was gaps. Looking at the top edge. I was looking at the top edge. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Oh, I see. Yeah, you were counting verts. Yeah, if you want to count verts yeah. or, or gaps, I see what you're saying. Either way. Uh, Russell Campbell says, If you merge the <laughs> to the wrong vertex... I'm sorry. <laughs> he was typing in all caps, so I feel like he should have been shouting. Uh, yeah, you should be able to use, um, was it V to just break that up? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. It was lovely. But just remember, if, if you've got more than one, say that was the next vert up the chain, mm -hmm. which has got four edges going into it, when you split it, it depends on which, that's right, isn't it? It depends on which direction you pull it in. Yeah. 
when you split yeah. as to how it splits. Just check that you haven't overly split your model. Okay, so just kind of looking here at the front of the groin area, kind of like the bikini line and where the hip is going to join into the front of the character. I'm just going to kind of reshape that a little bit. Now we still have a very little amount of detail here, so if you're worried about this gap you see between your drawing and the smooth, don't be. It's way too soon to stress that. However, our next step is actually probably going to make you think that we're going to start building the leg. And we're not, but I don't mind laying a little bit of groundwork for it first. So right now I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Did I count seven? I'm trying again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, I have seven edges here. If you have something different, do not stress. That's fine. But we're going to do an extrusion here. So I'm going to come to the front view. Let me go ahead and turn off smooth. We don't really need to see it right now. And tap E and do an extrusion, and you see how this already kind of starts to form a leg shape. But we need to start cleaning up the vertices, and I want these verts to stay pretty close to the torso area. We're not really ready to go down the leg yet. We will let it kind of arc upward a little bit, or sweep upward I guess would be another way to put that, maybe a little more accurate. Then I'm going to check the side view because we probably are going to need to clean up how we're blending from her hip and from her, her glutes right into her leg, but we just don't have the detail for that right now. So if you're worried about that, don't worry. At this stage, it's too early to, to stress that. And I don't mind telling folks that uh, more often than not, beginner modelers have just a tremendously fun time learning how to properly model the backside of a character. All right. So let's go ahead and just kind of show our smooth version. And you see how that's coming along. Now, here's how we're going to kind of go ahead and start changing some things right away. Currently, we have this edge. I'm trying to, I'm trying to point it out to you. If you've been following along with me you know, fairly precisely, which you don't necessarily have to, but we have this edge that goes around the underside of the groin. It goes along the inside of the thigh. And if we follow it around, it wraps back, it'll either split and go up the back or up this way. We have kind of like a little five point right here. I'm going to take this edge right here where it meets. So you see we have five polygons meeting together, and I'm going to remove this. I'm going to tap X and dissolve it. Before you gasp too hard, you're like, oh no. We're going to anchor it back off. So grab the knife tool, and we're going to split it right up the back. And I keep wanting to right-click because I just got done modeling in Maya just a minute ago. So don't be like me. Hit space when you're done making your cut. It's ironic that the only thing that you do that with that you know, right-click to exit with in <sighs> other programs is the only thing in Blender that you don't do. I know, I know. It's so annoying. It's so much I think fun. It's, I, my guess is it's so you can move around your model whilst. Yeah. That's the only reason I can come up with for it. Okay. Now, with that done, I can go ahead and start moving some vertices around. So Control-Tab-V. Let's jump over here to the side view and shade out. And we're already getting a bit of a nicer transition just from that. So we can kind of start rounding out uh, the back side just a little bit. The great thing about this is this allows us for um, some cleavage between the glutes as well as down the spine a little bit as well, which is very nice. So for instance, we can grab these vertices here at the center and we can start kind of pulling those forward a little bit to get some division between the buttocks, which is nice. Makes things look a little more natural. And you can do the same thing with the spine as well. Because kind of what we're modeling here is somebody that looks kind of like they're wearing a bodysuit or a unitard. And you'd still get some sort of division there. I'm 
pull this forward a little bit as well. How do you remove the edge again? Tap the X key. So just simply remove the edge with X and choose Dissolve. Now if you need to see it again, I'm going to back up. I uh, can't go back far enough, I don't think. Nope. Um, nah. Control Shift X. Control Shift X. Nah. As opposed to Control Y. Oh, I see control what you're y saying. Doesn't appear to work for me. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Um, I'll just move everything back. But uh, if you just edge slid that apart from the bottom section to the left, well, seeing that would what, represent where you. What were. I was what I was going to do actually was. Um, just remove the edge loop entirely, basically dissolve that down, and then uh, put everything back. But what we had, I'll just go ahead and tell you, we had an edge that went from here to out here, so we pulled that out and then ran the edge up the back instead. So that's how we're just going to end up leaving that for now. So I will take just a second now because I lost that, and move my vertices back. Fortunately, it was just a couple of seconds worth of work. Again, don't worry about making stuff look too perfect now. Like, even as you're trying to do this uh, separation between the spine or the indentation, uh, it doesn't need to look perfect just yet. But it will start to look a lot nicer as you go. Okay, now, our next split. Go ahead and get out of ortho. And I'll hide this as well. Uh, let's grab the knife tool, and we can cut straight down the back of the leg, like so. Now, what does this do? This gives us a point right back here that we can use to further kind of round things out. And it starts to give us a nice transition over toward the leg. Oops, that guy needs to go in, this needs to come out, and then we can take a look at the smooth model, which is steadily starting to get closer and closer to the drawing, which is good. Okay, so the next bit is that I would probably, if it was me, I'd be tempted to run an edge right down this great big gap area. <laughs> I'm tempted to. Yeah, uh, that would probably be my first move, but I'm not going to just yet. I'm going to start off by switching... Uh... What? You don't think so? Oh, did you already do it? No, 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 you fooled me. Oh. No, that's what I would... That's exactly why I was looking at that going, I would yeah. either move that across or... And I may yet. I may and yet. I didn't know which you were going to do. But I'm going to start off by doing an edge slide and pulling this edge more toward the center and just seeing what kind of detail I can get out of what I've got here. Now that being done, I'm not all that happy with the detail that I'm getting. I feel like I could use a little bit more. See, this way I feel like I put a good effort into not adding more detail than I need. Yeah, absolutely. So, and also, now that you've made that more central, can you use that as a bevel? Basically? Absolutely, and that's a, another really nice trick that I like to have up my sleeve. If I know I need more detail, is to take one main edge, I don't mean to make things x-ray just yet, and center it up right where you need it to be, and you can get it to line up and be all kinds of smooth and get the detail pretty much where you want it. Maybe a little exaggerated, so maybe pull it out just a little bit too far, actually. Then switch over to edges, grab the entire edge loop that runs up and down that entire section, then tap W and just bevel it out. And I can just take my percentage and maybe pull it in just a tad. And it gives you... And that's literally like taking a, pa a palette knife and chopping the corner off. Mm -hmm. um, I, it will, if you were look, it, instead of having... A, a, if, oh, it's difficult to describe without being able to draw. <laughs> <laughs> it is. You know, I'm trying to describe I, the picture. I, I do, I do, and I know exactly what you're trying to describe too, and it is kind of tricky. 
Okay, but that done, I feel like I should do a quick ready check and give people an opportunity to catch up. So let's go ahead and do that next. Okay, so I got, I got a question in from Russell. It says, the inside of my model shows uh, see-through like yours. How do I make the backside of faces solid like yours? You mean you're just not tapping the Z key? No, it's, he's got his normals inside out. Oh, you've got your normal. Just uh, hit Control N and flip your normals. Select or select just yeah. everything so in sub-object mode. Control. Mm. Yeah, so grab everything in object mode, and you should be able to, well, in edit mode, if you hit everything, like Control Tab F, hit A, and then Control N, that should recalculate your normals. I feel like I should look at his screen. No, I think you did that work, Russell. My normals point out. That's what I thought. Because <laughs> I feel like we're thinking of two different things. I can't... Ah, if they're all... Hello? Yeah, you're here. I am. Oh, it's good. sorry, the screen changed. It did. Yeah, if they were all already the same, that doesn't flip your normals. That, that will make them consistent. Right. Well, everything is pointing out, so he should be good to go. looks like you've got some, possibly some non-manifold, oh no, perhaps not. No, everything looks fine to me. I'm not, yeah, I'm not seeing what the problem is. Right. Do, you don't have a microphone, do you? Let me see here. No, I guess not. Okay, so tap the uh, the Z key for me. Yeah, you've switched off back face, or you switched on back face culling, which isn't necessarily a problem. Hang on just a second. Let me go ahead and switch back. I think that's the default behavior. I don't remember switching it on, and I get back face culling. Yeah, let me go ahead and switch this off. Now, I'm not getting back face culling, but that should be... Actually, after just coming to this from Maya from just a second, I actually don't remember how to switch on back face calling. My brain has actually just left me. It's walked right out the door. It's probably in user settings. Probably. I'll look it up later. For now, I really, you should be just fine. It shouldn't be causing any problems. Is it, is it prohibitive to the point where you can't work anymore? Well, we're going to go ahead and continue then. All right, so everybody looks like they're pretty much ready for us to move on from here. Let's go ahead and, and show our smoothing and see kind of what we have at this point. Now, we have a lot of detail that we can start using here to shape out uh, the character's rear, which is nice. Let's go ahead and jump back into edit mode. We can use a little more. We also have a five-sided face. you got to watch out for those. I generally don't like to keep them. And uh, the way I'm going to solve that, we've got an easy solution. We can just cut that straight down the leg, and that just becomes a bunch of quads. And you got to love that. Here's how we're going to handle that, though. I'm going to switch over to edges, grab these two edges, and edge slide them forward, like so. Let's grab these two edges, Control-E, edge slide these forward as well. Then I'll just get the knife tool. I missed the knife tool. So I get the knife tool and just make a cut right down through there. And switch over to vertices and just start moving some verts. Now, it's looking to me like we could take just a moment and <clears throat> excuse me, start positioning our detail a little more cleanly in the side view. So it looks like this could come forward this could come way forward. These could all come forward and continue with their flow. Which means this would need to come forward. In fact, it may need to actually start to arch forward as we get toward the thickness of the thigh itself. Pull this out. Pull these forward. Just go ahead and slide these up a little bit. And then once we get back here, these could actually start sliding back and getting some of that roundness have you, got a, have you got an odd vert set there out in space? That guy? Just, 
No, um, d down. I mean, that that may be one right there. Yeah, I just had one floating up. Uh, no, uh, down the bottom. That guy? No, uh, at the back of the bottom. Ah. Yeah, I do. And why I do, I'm not sure. But, I mean, easy enough to just delete. It was probably when you did that dissolve. Probably. All right. So, uh, the next thing I would probably do, and this would just be like kind of final prep for the leg, would be either to split this edge or do one more extrusion. And really, I think it'd be kind of a question of six of one and half a dozen of the other. So let me look at where we are here in the front view. And I'm just going to pull these up a little bit and get them in a nice sort of flowing line. Now, those are flowing along the front. We are going to need some more detail here in this direction, but I'm not going to... Again, I'm trying to add detail as slowly as I can. And we're going to need to start kind of outlining the underside of the buttock. So we can do that starting with this edge. So I'm pulling everything back so I have room for one more extrusion. So let's go ahead and switch over to edges. I'll grab this edge loop. Let's jump over to the front view. And I'll just do one really tiny extrusion. It doesn't need to go very far at all. And immediately pop back over to vertices. Now let's start off here in the side view. These new verts can be used to kind of outline the edge of the bottom, like so. And things will be a little bit messy for just a minute, which that's okay. And round that out a little bit. And then back over here in the side view again. we can just start pulling these down and letting them come across and form the front of the leg. Yes, Kevin? <laughs> Sorry. That's uh, backseat modeling. Oh, yeah. I understand. It's just... And we can start pulling some of these out. Now, back here toward the back, we have added plenty of geometry. So we could probably go ahead and start bringing the smooth a little closer to the actual lines of the drawing. Knowing we may need to kind of reverse some of that thinking a little later. But we should start getting a nicely rounded hip from this point. Would that be a, probably a good point to take an actual break? Actually, we will here in just a second. Because it's about nearly that time. I know yeah. it's not quite, but... Yeah. All right, make sure you save your work, if you haven't yet. And let's go ahead and take a quick break. I'm going to stop the video, and then we will pick back up from here.